We've made our basic wireframe. Now let's begin to add more content. The SF symbols we have now won't tell us as much as true images. So we're going to load some images into the icon, the header, and the menu items using two placeholder images. You'll find links to the photos in the comments below. Download them and store them in your photos album. Now I'm going to go pull up my photos album here. So I'm just going to go into my split screen mode here, pick up my photos, and I have an album of them right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the sidebar. So I select an image and drag it over here. And it loads the image into the sidebar. Go over here again, and I'll do the same thing with the second image. Just hold it down, drag it, and there you go. So we've got two images now here, and you can see the images. All right, second thing I want to do is go back here. I can get rid of my photos now. I'm going to go ahead and rename these because they're not very useful being IMG something. So let's say we got the surfer here. I'm just going to hold down on that. It'll give me a rename option, and I'll do that. And I'm going to call her Surf Girl 1 because we will have more than one picture. we got four pictures of surfers coming up, so that makes it easy to know. The second one up here, that's a pizza. We're just going to call that one pizza for now. So I'll rename it the same way and rename it pizza. Okay, so now I have my pizza. I can now close those tabs up too because I don't need them on top. And we go back to our code here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the Huli Pizza Takeout button for the app settings. And I can change the custom here to get a file. So I'm gonna go ahead and import from photos and I'm gonna hit the surfer. It's going to give me a message saying scale image because it has to be 124 and I have a bigger image. So go ahead and scale that and it pops it in. Okay, and we can go ahead and close that up with hitting the X. And if you hit the X on the top, you'll see that our place marker icon has now been replaced with the surfer on the playground itself. So I'm going to go back in there now. And we're not going to need the sidebar anymore, so we can get rid of that for now. And it's time to start adding images to our app. We've got image system name rectangle.fill. I can change that by, I'm going to get rid of system name. And you just need a string here. Now, you'll see that it disappears when I can't find one. It just doesn't do anything. But if I change what's inside the string here to surfgirl1, I get an image. Now, the image is immensely large, okay? It's the actual size of the image that we downloaded. So all of the stuff that's here only works for SF symbols. So I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to put in some new stuff. First thing, if you're ever scaling an image, you're going to have to use resizable as a modifier. So we're going to put in resizable here. And that resizes it. Now you'll notice it loses its proportions. It's now sizing so that it fits into the view that we have. I'm going to want to make sure that it's scalable. And there's two versions of that in the modifier. So put in scaled. And you'll see there's scaled to fit and scaled to fill. Uh, we're going to use the one scaled to fit so that it always fits in here versus fill, which will just help fill all of the view with as much of the picture as it can. But I'm going to use scaled to fit. And there we go. It's now pulled up and looking a lot better. So let's go try the other one. We've got the dot that we have on the menu item menu description. So let's go over here and we're going to go to menu item view. And close that back up again. And here in menu item view, I've got an image as well. And so we've got, again, it's got system name. I'm going to get rid of system name. And we're going to change circle fill to pizza. And we get our pizza, and as you can see, it's huge again. So again, I'm going to use resizable here. And that makes it much better looking. However, it's not 100% right because it's squished. And I'm going to want to have this as special size. Particularly, this is going to be more like a bullet. So I want to have it as special size. 
scale to fit will will change the size here. If I, for example, change my preview a little bit here, you'll see that it moves with it and will scale it to whatever size I need it to be. Uh, in this case, however, I'm going to want to say that I'm always at a certain size. So instead of using scaled here, I'm going to use frame. Okay, so that's and if you can see on the bottom there, we've got a couple different versions of this. The easiest one is width and height, and that'll give us a specific width and height. I'm going to use one that's a little bit more than that, and that's that second one has the parameters max width and max height. Max width says I can only go up to this size, okay? So let's say I start with 150 for the max width and max height, which is right there, and I'm gonna make that 150 as well. So I get a square, okay. And you can see, okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, we now have something that's the right size. Maybe I might want it smaller, I don't know. Let's say, let's go to say 50, would 50 work better? I think 50 is too small, so I'm gonna go with the 150. Let's leave it like that for now. But I've got another thing. I wanted a circle. And I don't have a circle here. So what am I going to do about this circle? Well, there is another modifier to help us out here. And that's called clip shape. Okay. And you can find it right there. Now, it takes a shape. So you're going to have to use shapes. And there's a bunch of shapes. There's capsules. There's rounded rectangles. But the one we're interested in, and it's the simplest one to use, is circle. So you just have to type in circle here. And then you can see it. There's circle. And then it's an object, so you're going to need to put those parentheses there. So go ahead and do that. That's actually doing that initializer we talked about before. And there we go. And we get ourselves a, a circle. That's all we needed to do, and that looks pretty good. Now, I got one more thing I'm going to do here, and that is that this is looking a little bit annoying as far as that image hugging the edge. Now there's two different ways I can handle this. I can put padding in menu item view or I can put padding in content view. For this, and for reasons I'll discuss a little later, for now we're gonna go over here to content view and I'm just gonna put in padding here. And you can see on the top one, it's now put padding in there, but it's put it on all of it. I don't want it on all of it, I just wanna get that circle away from the edge. So I'm going to change this to dot leading. And if you put that in as a parameter, it'll only move some padding and space it over just a little bit from that leading edge, the left edge in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab this, copy and paste it, and do that on the other one. Okay, so we've got that one now done. Okay, that's looking good. Now I can use clip shape in other ways too. And so I'm going to go over here to where we got Surf Girl 1. And I can actually use the clip shape here, and I'm going to use one other kind of clip shape that you'll see often used, and that's rounded rectangle. Now, rounded rectangle actually has a parameter here, if you look at it. You've got corner radius, and so you use that first one that says corner radius CG float. Don't do the one with the CG size yet, okay? And the CG float here is a number that'll say what those edges are. So let's just say I do 20 here. And you can see I now have a rounded edge. That's a little too much rounded for me. I'm just going to do 10. Just a little bit of an off of that edge. And here might be a good place to use a full padding. So I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to put in padding. There we go. And that's starting to look much better. We get some some borders, we get some background showing, and it's all looking pretty good. We can see already our app is looking pretty darn good for an app. And so we're getting to the place where we can see where the placeholders are, how we're going to put things together. Uh, that's how where we're going to go as far with Swift UI for the moment. We need to do some more Swift related stuff. And so in our next lesson, we're going to explore more about types and type declarations. So hit subscribe by hitting the rainbow pizza and I will see you on the next lesson.